They'll drive it home to San Francisco. Back in the Levi's archives, they'll scrutinize each piece, probing for clues on how Levi's endured, even through the toughest times. It's 1929. The stock market crashes. Americans are down and out, out of work, out of cash, but full of grit and fortitude. Their clothes need to be as hard-working and tough as they are, and blue jeans fit the bill. During the 30s, jeans and denim and Levi's were a, a very humble kind of product. It, it was about as far from glamorous as you could possibly get, and uh, people wore them with a lot of humility. And on ranches, families like Dale Berry's in Texas proudly care for their clothing. This was during the old depression years. So I can remember my mom being out there with a rub board, washing these things in this big iron uh, pot with a, and she would build a fire under there. Still, Levi's hold a certain cachet. When I was all oh, eight, ten years old, my mother bought me my first pair of Levi's. And let me tell you, I was the cat's meow. That was, I, I transferred from being a kid to a boy. It's the 40s, and life changes again. Bombs hit Pearl Harbor. America is at war. Sons and daughters become GIs and wax, and the home front feels very different. The urban women had to go to work in the factories. The urban women had to do a lot more manual labor jobs, and that's when they really started wearing jeans. Every patriotic citizen's top priority is supporting the troops. Rationing of everything from food to clothing is the battle cry. Levi Strauss and Company did its duty, altering its products to get behind the war effort. Lynn has evidence. This is a very rare pair of pants. This pair of 501 jeans dates to World War II. These pants are dead stock, dungarees never worn and never sold. The guarantee ticket is still on the pants, as is the pocket flasher, noting the pants are different for the duration. In order to conserve raw materials during the war effort, the U.S. government told us that we weren't allowed to stitch the arcuate on the pockets because it had no function. It was decorative only. And since we lost everything in 1906, even we ourselves don't even know why the arcuate was first used, but it doesn't really have a function for the pants. So, in order to assure our customers that they were getting genuine Levi's jeans, we painted the stitching on every pair of 501 jeans. To save more supplies, some less vital rivets disappear, like the one on the watch pocket. And another rivet that everyone hated for years is eliminated, the crotch rivet. We started to get letters from cowboys specifically saying that when they crouched in front of the campfire, this rivet, which was made of copper, would heat up and it would become very uncomfortable and a very delicate part of their body. And I have a feeling our thought was, well, pff, what a bunch of wimpy cowboys. Then Levi's CEO, Walter Haas Sr., goes on a camping trip and feels the cowboy's pain. Which happened itself just about the time the U.S. entered World War II, and we had to remove a number of rivets from our products in order to comply with government regulations on rationing raw materials. And we thought, you know what? Nobody likes this crotch rivet. It's going to go. And it never came back. For Levi's, the war had an unexpected benefit, showing blue jeans to the world outside America. The American GIs are overseas, they're in Europe, they're in Japan. That's kind of when the rest of the world was really exposed to these are blue jeans and these are what the Americans wear. They were highly sought after and so they could barter their Levi's jeans for uh, stays in hotels, meals in restaurants, and a lot of other things that I can't talk about on television. The war ends and the soldiers return home victorious and ready to start new families. Sprouting the most important generation of American consumers, the baby boomers. As little kids, they adopt jeans as their look, a look that comes of age with them. A standard item was, was the 501 Levi jeans. At some high schools, Levi's are steeped in tradition, when the mean kids cut off the red tags from the new kids' jeans. 
a tough guy would go around collecting red tags off of, off of people's jeans. I don't know what they did with so, Somewhere there's a, there's a guy, a really tough guy, with a lot of those little red tags. Yeah. In the next few years, those tough guys become rebels with and without causes. That's next. In the 50s, the uniformity of post-war suburban ticky-tacky cries out for rebellion. And blue jeans were poised for that rebel yell. If you look at any kind of creative culture, the whole beatnik generation, denim is at the very core of the dress of all of those individuals and, and all of those cultures. Young men returned from the war were spending a lot of time on motorcycles, wearing Levi's jeans, white t-shirts, and black motorcycle jackets. So the link between denim, danger, and rebellion morphed from sort of the individuality of the cowboy to the individuality with, with the danger streak of the guy on the motorcycle in the 1950s. That made it desirable to the kids, because the kids wanted to be a little dangerous, wanted to be a little tough, and started getting pulled into the culture. Blue jeans are so tied up with bad boys that many schools ban dungarees from the classroom. Levi's jeans are up for a rumble, fighting back with ad campaigns to change parents' minds. Some people began to think that simply wearing denim would make you a juvenile delinquent or make you want to jump on a motorcycle and break all of society's rules. Both cowboys and motorcycle riders need pants tough enough to handle changing terrain and weather. In fact, how they show wear on their 501 jeans looks similar, evidenced by these 50s eras jeans. It's very possible this very pair was worn by someone who spent time on a motorcycle or a horse. It has many of the same kinds of whiskering and fading on the front that we saw on our cowboy pair. Um, I like to think that, that some guys spent a lot of time on a motorcycle riding around the west or maybe even the east coast wearing this pair of jeans. It's a look Hollywood picks up, putting Marlon Brando in Levi's in The Wild One. He kind of prototyped that angry young man, that animal, sexy character, and he wore jeans and a leather jacket. So teenagers right across America, in Europe, worldwide, saw Marlon Brando in jeans, leather jacket, and thought, I want to be that guy. That is the moment when they stopped being work pants and became a, 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 certainly a very clear statement, and we can now say a fashion statement. The image serves Levi's well. You had all of those images of pool rooms and rock and roll and couples in the 50s running away and grinding against each other. And Levi's has used all of that imagery, all that James Dean imagery, very well over the years and very effectively. Perhaps Hollywood's most memorable take on that era is American Graffiti. Costume designer Aggie Rogers shows how she modified the bad boy's jeans based on her own teenage style. The John Milner character, the bad boy, we would take a straight razor, you know, like you clean the paint off your window, and, tr and trim right through these, these, this stitching, and take the belt loop off the top and the bottom, and then we'd fold them down and then you just iron them as hard as possible. I remember doing it for some of my boyfriends. My mother must have been shocked. Let's see if I can get this turned around. So in the front, you always had your headlights showing. I always think these are like headlights, but you did the same thing. So you'd, you'd, you definitely wouldn't cover up the rivet, but it would all turn down. This, the, and it would just come up to a point here in the center. Don't you think this is sort of a, um, come on? I do. The 50s music scene proves fertile ground for blue jeans growth. When rock and roll became the youth music, and with you know Bobby Soxers wearing their blue jeans, the cuffed up, and it just became such a, a look associated with the young. The innocence of the 50s is shattered in the 60s. Vietnam rages, 